do you want to know the reason why a website is ranking or not ranking without having the website credential? Hello everyone, welcome back. For those who are new here, I'm Umar, the founder of Growth Winner. On this channel, I share my learnings and insights on SEO. In this video, I'm going to share how I do website audit in under 15 minutes. You will need two things for this audit. First is the website URL and second one is Ahrefs. No other SEO tool. The greatest successes in SEO comes from solving really simple issues, not the complex ones or complicated ones. So the first and the foremost thing I check is organic traffic. It's a long debate which tool is best. As far as I have experienced, SimilarWeb gives you near to accurate traffic numbers. The only problem is it never works perfectly for low traffic websites as of now. For this audit, we only have Ahrefs, so we are gonna stick with it. Head over to Ahrefs, enter the website in Site Explorer and check the organic traffic of the website. Well, why we are checking the traffic in the first place? Since there could be two reasons. Number one, the website is getting good traffic and the graph is on upward trajectory. Our aim is to find what make Google to rank this website. Number two, the website isn't getting traffic or it's declining. So our aim will be to find out the reasons behind it. Let's start with the on-page SEO audit. One of my favorite search operators when it comes to analyzing a website is Site Column. It lets you nearly check everything about the website, like how many pages are indexed, how the title looks like in search engines, if and how the website is using their brand name in title text, etc. Using the same search operator, you can go ahead and apply the filter that tells you which pages haven't been updated for more than a year now using the tools feature in Google. Now, here are some tips that I learned from Glenn on using the search operator. Site colon your website.com minus in URL HTTPS. It shows the index URL without HTTPS. If you further append the previous search operator with minus in URL www, it will also exclude the URLs with www and only shows that are indexed in Google without HTTPS and www. One common sense point here is exclude www only if the website has this version. If the website originally has a non-ww version, then there is no point in running this search command, right? If you were not able to understand my previous point, play back and listen to it again. I'm sorry, but I speak fast. Now, same goes for the other search operators, such as if you want to exclude something from the URL, add a word with minus in URL, like site colon example.com minus in URL slash product slash example.com here is obviously the website under consideration. This search operator will exclude all the product pages, assuming the product pages has slash product slash in the URL. Next, headings audit. Can we skim the page by just reading the headings? If not, we may need to optimize and add more headings. For my niche websites, I aim to give an overview of the page just through headings. From an SEO perspective, those headings are optimized for target entities and related keywords of the page. Next up, internal links audit. Open a few recent posts or pages on the website and check how they internally link the articles. Are they enough? How do they internally link the articles? from above the fold or from bottom content. Do they have internal links at all or not? Do they have a website? Uh, no. Now, the schema audit. If and what type of schemas they are implementing on their service, product, or landing pages, or even blog posts. By the way, you can do all these steps using a free Chrome extension named Detail SEO that lets you check the title, headings, internal links, schemas, and especially those Google search operators that I shared earlier, and all within a click. The best part of this extension is that it tells you if the page is missing or skipping any heading level. This doesn't make sense to me as I prefer to put H3 inside H2 than the opposite. Literally, this extension tells you everything. The link to install this extension is in description. Now, URL analysis. Although URLs won't impact your rankings, 
directly, they can impact your performance. You know the general practice of putting your primary keyword in the URL, but if the URL has, let's say, the previous year mentioned, it can really deter people from sharing it. My aim is to keep a URL descriptive, clean, and straightforward, providing a good idea of what the page content is about. But I don't recommend putting every word from the title tag into the URL. That looks bad and makes the URL long enough. It's long and it's boring. Another thing, check if there are any underscores instead of iPhones or capital letters in the URL. One interesting thing with URL is the trailing slash. I always prefer to check both versions, that is with and without the trailing slash because example.com slash blog slash versus example.com slash blog both are viewed as different URLs by search engines. There is nothing wrong with both of them. They're perfect. Just pick one format and stick to it. If someone tries to access the wrong format, the website should redirect them to correct version. Hence, the pro tip here is you can check the URLs in the sitemap of the website if you don't have access to crawling tools like Screaming Frog. I earlier said in the video, we will audit the website in under 15 minutes without using tons of tools and still get some practical insight. All right, for which pages should you normally conduct the page level or on-site SEO checks? That's a good question question. I don't know. I go ahead and see the top pages report in Ahrefs. Just make sure it's sorted by traffic. Alternatively, you can do it for low traffic pages as well and see what high traffic pages are doing and low traffic pages are missing. It could be publishing more supporting articles, better internal linking, optimizing or de-optimizing for relevant keywords and entities in the article. Moreover, the Top Edges report tells you the traffic diversity of the website and that's an important check as well, especially if you are analyzing this website to acquire, aka buying this website, right? So you should know what the traffic looks like across all of the keywords. Now, here are the steps for off-page SEO audit. There are two things that you can do in Ahrefs from Backlink's point of view. Number one, the Backlink report itself. And number two, the Best Buy Links report. To check the Backlinks report, I apply these filters. One link per domain, do follow only, backlink type is blog, language is English or your preferred target language. Lastly, the DR is greater than 30 and traffic is greater than 1000. And what type of quality links the website has? If you see ratio of original links means before applying the filters versus the number of links remaining after applying the filters have a huge gap, that means the website has high number of low quality links. So what's gonna be the recommendation here? Build high quality links for sure from the website having good organic traffic. We at GrowthWinner provide a complimentary backlink audit for free. Check out the link in description for more detail. Now, for the Best Buy Links report, it tells you the pages that got the most traction and earned or gained links. You get the idea what worked for the website and what could work in future as well, except for the trendy pages or posts. As we are talking about the backlinks, how can we forget the anchor text? Check out the anchor text reports in Ahrefs and see what type of anchor the website has whether they are under-optimized or over-optimized. If you want to know my definitions of different type of anchors and how I devise the strategy of anchor text distribution for my own and client's website, check out this video where I shared my advanced anchor text strategy that literally nobody talks about. One quick hack is that, and this is not hard and fast rule to identify if the target money page on the website needs on-page or off-page improvement is this. Search for your keywords in quotes in Google like this. If your page doesn't appear in the top five or so results, that likely means your on-page is not strong enough. If you feel that you have got the on-page SEO right, but the page is not ranking as expected, instead of jumping right into backlinks, try building out supporting pages. I know what you are thinking. I own a link building agency, but I am recommending this step to you, but no problem. We do that sometimes. So here are the steps for design and user experience audit. For design and user experience audit, I don't use any tool. Rather, I prefer to open the website in my mobile phone. Yes, mobile, and then desktop. 
We are used to seeing websites on desktop, but we never bother to check them on mobile. See if the menu looks good and accessible, how the above default content looks like. Are featured images small enough so the visitor can read and see that there is an answer below the image? What's the structure of the article looks like on mobile? Is it noisy or does it have a good white space? Then on desktop, check the top navigation, products or service pages aka landing pages and blog section. Think like a visitor who landed on the website. Did they get what they were looking for? If you are promoting lead magnets or low ticket offers on the website, are CTAs prominent enough to direct them to the right direction? I hope this example were enough for you to understand what I wanted to convey. I wouldn't count the website speed as a technical SEO factor, but it's important for the visitors. If the website takes a minute to load, the users are going to close it and open other results from serve. A lot of website visitors don't know what SEO is, but when they are searching for something, they don't like to wait. Honestly. Then what about technical SEO audit, Omar? In most cases, as far as my experience is, it matters mostly for big websites with thousands of pages. For small businesses or publishers, it doesn't matter that much unless you have discouraged search engines from indexing the whole website or disallowed Googlebot in robots.px. <laughs> Since this is a 15 minute audit and we are only using Ahrefs to figure out things that we can implement them right away, so we are going to stay with our previous point that I explained. Now let me know in the comments if you want me to create an in-depth guide for technical SEO audits that I do for enterprise or large scale websites. Here is the thing, if you are going to recommend these changes to the website owner or someone who is managing the SEO of this website. Always, always recommend fixing small amount, like fixing title of five product pages of an e-commerce store covering one category. That means I would never advocate fixing all issues at once. The reason is if your search traffic suddenly tanked and you have made 20 changes to your website, it makes so much harder to pinpoint a bad change. Another important thing is to note that I would never touch my top ranking pages even if I have found an issue and the page doesn't seem to be perfectly optimized. So now you know how to do the website SEO audit in 15 minutes. Check out this video where I have my KPIs of SEO or if you happen to be in link building, I have a complete series on YouTube. You can watch it here. Thank you so much. Bye bye.